Regina Y. Favors with Favors Single Life Tips. So I have a last concept that I want to apply to this viral post that I have been already discussing in previous audio lessons. And so the concept is mate switching hypothesis. And I discussed this psychological concept or the psychology concept in different uh, articles different audio lessons and so now i want to apply it to this viral post so may switching hypothesis psychological strategy designed to detect and abandon costly mates in favor of switching to more beneficial mates and so this concept is a very interesting one because before you can make a decision to abandon a mate you usually have to uh, find someone who will be of interest to you, who will be of benefit. The person has, uh, the person doesn't necessarily have to be secured romantically. It could just be an idea of a person. It could also be an actual person that you are interested in, but you are, or you may not be willing to let go of your current partner until the new partner is fully secured. And so when you are thinking about mate switching, um, you usually sort of keep the current partner at arm's length and it's usually uh, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, uh, sometimes financially. And when you are in a relationship with someone that you wanna mate switch with, you are usually the one who is not paying all the bills. The other person is paying all the bills, is, is, is paying the shelter costs, overhead, et cetera. Because usually, as I know in a previous audio lesson, that when you invest in something, you wanna return on your investment, especially when you are investing money and time and heart and body uh, and other types of responsibilities, you don't just up and leave that partner because you have put in the investment. That's why some partners who uh, who struggle with divorce, they struggle. They don't always struggle with the idea of divorce. They struggle with the idea of investment. That I put all this time, I put all this money, I put all this heart, uh, I was in. I thought we were in together. I thought we were building something together. And then now you want to leave? You want to divorce me? That's a very hard pill uh, to swallow because why would I continue to pour into a bottomless pit? And this is what happens when it comes to mate switching, that one of the partners is interested in a long-term relationship and the other partner has sold that person a dream. And you buy into the dream, you, you commit to the dream, you think it's going somewhere, and then suddenly the bottom drops. But I venture to say people don't just all of a sudden uh, leave you. They've been leaving you for a good while throughout the relationship. It doesn't matter how long the relationship is. It can be a few months. It can be a year. It can be five years. I once saw this video on YouTube about a person. Uh, she asked her friend, and I think the channel, channel is Sheila True, True Love. And she asked her friend why he has never married the woman he's he's been with for eight years. For eight years, they've been living together, uh, been committing to the relationship together. At least that's what the woman thought. And the man told her that I'm still looking for the one. So he's wasting her time knowing that she's not the one, but he's going to keep her at arm's length until the one he really wants comes along. And I'm not even quite certain that he knows who the one is. Sometimes it is a feeling, sometimes it is uh, a connection, sometimes it is just something you know, you come across the person and you just know, right? But then what you do is, the longer that you stay in a relationship with someone else, it's almost like you are blocking your blessing. Because if you are connected to another feminine energy, it's going to block any future feminine energy that you might be interested in because anyone who sees you together with someone might might believe that you two are married. 
And so why then would they make themselves available to you? And so therefore, the logic that people often use when they think that they are getting over on someone or they are putting someone on hold or using them as a placeholder or come up person, they think they, they have it all together in their head, in their heads, but their logic is a little off. It would be better for you to get to your, uh, to get your, alone to yourself, keep a place, keep a job, make sure you can pay for the place yourself and not have to ask a woman for any money. Do that. And that's better to do that. And then your mind is free. Your heart is free. Your body is free. Your finances are free. And then you can think more soberly about where you want to take yourself romantically. And that person will show up on your path. But you never do bad to get to better. You can't treat the current person that you are with badly and think you're going to get better in someone else. So I want to talk about mate switching hypothesis, psychological strategy designed to detect and abandon costly mates in favor of switching to more beneficial mates. And so I'm going to read the viral post and then apply the concept. I can't believe my girlfriend really think that I'm going to marry her and we'll live happily ever after. Soon as, a, so soon as I get a decent job, I'm going to leave her and start dating my types. People need to understand that we're not entitled to be with them forever just because they were with us when we were broke. We each have our own preference and that doesn't make me love my current girlfriend any less. Things change. Feelings change. It is a vicious life cycle. If my girl could leave me for a guy who's well established and appreciates her more than I do, I would gladly accept and never hold her hostage just cause she's been with me through thick and thin. This entitlement over people's lives is the reason people resort to violent behavior. And remember, in every audio, I always call attention to that last sentence in the last paragraph. This entitlement over people's lives is the reason people resort to violent behavior. And he's almost a walking contradiction because as much as he wants to say that if my girl could leave me for another person, I wouldn't hold her hostage. Well, in reality, he's holding her hostage. And just as much as he might be uh, 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 implying that he could use violent behavior uh, against her if she decides to not let him go, He's, he's blind to the understanding that she could use violent behavior against him when she, realized, when she realizes he's been playing her the whole time. And we know that he's been playing her the whole time because he said, I can't believe my girlfriend really thinks that I'm going to marry her. So on some level, he must have sold her a dream. Uh, he must have sold her this idea that you are the right mate for me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Although that might be true, or she might have gotten that understanding, or he might have pushed that idea through some form of uh, action, even if the action was fake and fraudulent, um, it still suggests that in going public about um, making this statement, it suggests that he already knew that she was not going to be the one for him. Because he doesn't place marriage as a, as a category. He doesn't place her and marriage in the same category. He only calls her girlfriend. And he does refer, uh, use the word love, but that might be, you know, for performative reasons, you know, just to, just to demonstrate what love might look like in this type of relationship, even though it's under the guise of him wanting to mate switch. And so he will utilize multiple psychological strategies to keep her on hold because at this point, she's no different than a come up woman that he's using her for her financial resources, her housing, her, her, um, her benefits, anything that she offers in this, uh, at this time while he's down, because remember he said he doesn't have a decent job and he's broke. It is implied that he's broke. If he wasn't broke, he wouldn't have said, he wouldn't have used the word broke within um, um, his post, and he wouldn't have used the word thick and, thi uh, thick and thin. So then the thick and thin really refers to someone who is a ride or die, because whatever he is going through, she's there to meet his needs. So as a mate, the only thing she's really good for is to help secure him. 
to help 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 secure him financially, mentally, psychologically. In other words, she is a mule. She's really a mule. Whenever he's down, whenever he doesn't have what he needs, she's there to mule and and be there for him. That means that's her mate value. That's her mate value. And I notice that a lot of people, a lot of men uh, resent women being helpers to them. And you're not really supposed to be a helper as a single woman to a single man. Helper and help meet is really designed within the marital context. And that's our problem uh, as women. We keep giving marital benefits, marital advantages, marital uh, resources when we are not actually married. Not w Common law married is not married. It's, it is not married. And so when we do that, we run the risk of not only messing up, messing up our own reputation, wearing ourselves down, wearing our minds down, wearing um, our bodies down, because we think that the person that we are with, we are investing in. Because again, why would we stay in a situation that is not going to yield a, a, a good result? No one who invests in the stock market hopes to lose their money every time they put money into the stock market. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? And so uh, she's placing time and money and heart and body and finances into someone um, that is really reflective of a graveyard. And so this psychological strategy where he has sold her a dream that, that she would become his wife, even if he didn't say it, he could not say it. And it's on us as women to... I know that uh, that certain men can lie to you and get you to believe that that uh, that you guys are working things out and you're going to come together and be together and this is a long-term situation. But it's also on us as women to stop believing men who just say a bunch of words with no action. And then you got to look at those men who have a lot of action, like love bombing, but really don't don't have a uh, have core values they don't have the words to match the actions so he's already detected that she's not going to be the one and i don't believe that he did that while he was in the relationship i believed he framed her as a person he could leave when he saw her on the dance floor or when he saw her at a library or when he saw her at a grocery store uh, wherever he saw her in the parking lot, it doesn't matter. When he saw her, he knew she was a person uh, that or who he was not going to marry. He knew that she was a person he can use and be with and pass time with and have sex with and do some things, go to the movies, basically perform and act out what a relationship would be in this situation but he had no intent from the very beginning it's like what i tell students all the time or or this understanding that i got about students when when students say at the end of, of the semester that i didn't learn anything in this class at all i didn't learn anything well you had to have believed at the very beginning of the semester that you weren't going to learn anything and you can choose any reasoning as your foundation uh, it can be any reason, any reason. I'm not going to add any sort of perspective on that. But you looked at the class or you looked at the professor or you looked at the room or you looked at the course and you knew immediately you were not going to learn anything. You may not have voiced that immediately at that time, but you don't get to the very end of the semester saying you, you didn't learn anything. You believe that at the very beginning and then you uh, structured your behavior uh, to the point where you're not going to put in much effort, you're not going to do all that is required, you're not going to, uh, you're just going to give the basic, the basic minimum, right? And in, in other words, you quit the class before it even started, or when it started, you quit the class. You quit making any real uh, significant, important contribution, and so then, by the end of the semester, you just confirm your own belief 
f from the very beginning that I didn't learn anything at all. So this is the same uh, uh, thing in, in kind that when you enter these relationships, that relationship, when you get to the end of it, it's like, um, what's a, uh, a typical statement might be, um, she, she's sort of casting blame. She was all that and she was this and she was that. And um, I shouldn't have gotten with her and I should have been with her and everything. You believe that at the very beginning. You knew that you should have waited at the very beginning. So this detection, even though uh, it is happening now within a relationship, I believe it happens much more easily at the very beginning of the relationship. And then you go through the process of abandoning the person. You don't show up. You don't contribute. You don't do that much. Uh, you just pass the time because you're really looking for the person you really want to be with. And you may not even know who that person is. Or again, you might know who that person is. So the abandonment is a process. It's not just a, um, it's not just a final act that you commit. It is a process. Again, you were supposed to come to dinner, right? And you didn't come home. You were playing around with some ex who wouldn't give you the time of day if you weren't with someone. You were uh, hanging out with your friends. You set your mother as a priority over the relationship. You, um, um, you slept around, you did, you did a number of things. You spent your money, you know, to the point that you couldn't contribute, right? You know, you got a paycheck every two weeks, but somehow by the time you got home, you had no money, right? Or you just refused to make any contribution at all. Or sometimes you got up in her face, whatever it is, the abandoning aspect of the relationship, that's a process. That's something that you continue um, to build and build and build and build until you come home one day, pack your bags and walk out the door. Or until she realizes that she's been dealing with a con the whole time and she packs your bags and exit you out of the door. But the, the detection is something that begins much earlier in the relationship. And then, it, and then the abandonment is something that is a process leading to a final uh, event, right? And so he's saying, I can't believe my girlfriend really think that I'm going to marry her. And that's a form of mocking. That's a form of being sarcastic. That's a uh, form of laughing at her that although it looks like we are we are in relationship with each other we're not really in relationship with uh with each other i just told you that we were in relationship but i never planned on staying i just needed a place to stay i needed uh, uh um i needed some i needed some help but you thinking that we were going to stay together that's really on you i didn't tell you that we were going to stay together i didn't did i ever use that language even if the person is living in your house eating up your food, using up the water, the gas, the electricity. And even if you think uh, just because you go out and hold hands and you go to the movies or whatever that you are in a relationship, he's saying that you are not in a relationship. You might have gotten the, uh, the title of girlfriend, but that could be still performative. There is such a thing as performative art. He will perform like a boyfriend. He will perform or he will encourage you to perform like a girlfriend, but it's not going to transition into what you think is going to transition into, which is marriage. It, you can plan all day. You can buy the dress. You can do whatever you want to, but I never told you that I was going to get married to you. I just really needed to come and live with you because, because I didn't have a decent job. I was broke. And I needed someone to stick with me through, thin, uh, through thick and thin, but I have always planned to leave. That's the detection part, right? And and what he is suggesting that that the current girlfriend is not favorable enough to stay with. She's beneficial in the sense that she provides for him. In other words, she's walking in a masculine mindset even if even if she didn't start out wanting to do that he has switched roles in a sense right he switched them he switched the both of them 
She wants to be a woman in a relationship. She wants to be feminine in a relationship. But because he's allowing her to pay for him, he becomes the feminine and she becomes the masculine just by default because he won't contribute in the way that he should contribute. No man should move in with a woman, period. A man should be a man. He should take care of himself. If a woman can take care of herself and she doesn't get half the pay uh, that a man gets, right, then if she can go get a job, keep a job, put herself through school, take care of her kids, or if she can do all of that, then he can do it. And so when he's saying that people need to understand that we're not entitled to be with them forever just because they were with us when we were broke, uh, that's, that's ironically saying you are not really of any true benefit uh, to me in terms of using what you have done, uh, contributing to my life, contributing to this relationship to convert you to marriage material. You are not marriage material. It doesn't matter that you put in all this time with me. You're still, I don't see you. I have not framed you as marriage material, as a person I can marry. I have only framed you as a person I can leave. I can mate switch on. And I can not only mate switch on you and leave you, but when my situation with with the new person doesn't work out, I can may switch again and come right back to you because I know you will accept me. I know you will take me back. I know you will cry and moan and, and fight and yell and argue. But, but as soon as I say certain words to you, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you are going to take me back and I'll stay with you for a good moment. And then I will continue to look for the person that I really want to be with. And that could be the same person who broke up with me and I ended up having to come uh, to you. And I will go back and forth, may switching and may switching back and forth until I fully secure the new mate. And even if I'm with the new mate and we are secure and we could even be married. If I desire to may switch and step out of the marital bedroom and uh, the house and come back and sleep with you from time to time, to keep you on the hook, I can do that because I know you will let me. And there's a lot that's going on here. The fact that she was willing to put up with him when he was broke and didn't have a decent job through thick and thin tells him that she is dependable, predictable. He is certain of it. He can depend on her. Uh, and that can be years. There have been re times of relationships where men have left one woman, married another, kept the previous woman on hold for years. He's lying because if he thought for one moment she could uh, find someone else, he said, if my girl could leave me for a guy who's well established and appreciates her more than I do, I would gladly accept and never hold her hostage just because she's been with me through thick and thin. He's lying. Because if he thought for one moment that there was somebody out there who would be good to her, he might step up his game a lot better. So he's suggesting that he doesn't think there's anybody out there for her. Because if he did, he wouldn't act the way that he's acting. Now, he's not well established. He doesn't appreciate her more. Um, um, and he would never accept some other man coming in and taking on a more provider role. He would feel like he was in competition, even if he doesn't plan on doing anything to secure the competition. And so he's saying that he wants to switch to more beneficial mate. That's kind of suspect because he did say, I, uh, once I get a decent job, I'm going to start dating my types. But if, but there isn't anything in this statement that uh, in these tweets that suggest that once he gets a decent job, he's going to get his own place. So there's nothing here that says or suggests he's had his own place before. He's 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 paid for his own place before. So in really in in reality, he may be looking for the next person to take him in, a more beneficial mate, meaning that 
this person here doesn't make the kind of money that he really wants uh, wants to have, like in terms of a lifestyle. So therefore, he's looking for a more beneficial mate, a more uh, a person who will be even more willing to take him in, help him, be the provider for him. And this entitlement over people's lives is really him. He's projecting, but it's really him and his entitlement and what he believes to be as important um, to hold over someone else. He's keeping this person hostage. This woman could go on, heal, live her life, and another man come along and be a better person for her who would be willing to convert the relationship to marriage. And so he's his masculine energy even if he's walking in his feminine, his masculine energy is really blocking any potential mate uh, who could possibly be a better person for her. And so this mate switching hypothesis, again, psychological strategy designed to detect and abandon costly mates in favor of switching to more beneficial mates is a very dangerous thing to do. Because when someone realizes that you have been playing them the whole time and that you have not had any intention at all to make good on any kind of promise, even if it was a fake promise, even if it was you selling the person a dream and you never had any intention and all you did was create a situation for the relationship to be reflective of a hamster's wheel meaning that you are everywhere and nowhere at the same time. When someone realizes that they have been played and they've been playing themselves and that you've been playing them, that can be very dangerous. You never know what frame of mind a person is when they, when they come to the realization of what they mean to you. The fact that he decided to put this on, on social media and reveal public and 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 not understand and not see uh, that she's going to see this and even if you are not with the person anymore the fact that it's still public and she's going to see this and realize that she's been a fool the whole time her family is going to see it because when women are in relationships we tell the family everybody knows especially if we think we're going to marry that person right everybody knows and people are going to see this, her family's going to see this, her friends going to see this. We tell folks on the job because we think we got the one. We think we got somebody that we can we can uh, shape into a relationship. That may not be the best statement to make, but we think we got this person who can be shaped into marriage, right? Well, that right there should already tell you that that is the wrong strategy because the person has to already come to the relationship with a marriage mindset. You can't change the person. You can't get them to see you differently. You can't get them to see relationships differently. You can't get them to, to frame you for marriage. You can be marriage material, but they cannot be marriage material for you. And, and definitely if, if, if the person is wanting to may switch, you are not marriage material for them. And somewhere I think you know that. Uh, sometimes we are very delusional. We think that, that the situation is gonna change and if we just stick it out, hold out, I just know it's gonna change uh, or whatever, but it's not gonna change. It's not, once a person makes up his or her mind that you are not the one, there's nothing you can do. You can, you can cry, you can pray, you can read your Bible, you can do whatever you want to do. But once that person has decided not to be with you in whatever form or fashion, it is your time to you for you to exit that relationship because it's going to affect you mentally, it's going to affect you emotionally, psychologically. Your money is always affected when you are in these toxic relationships. You are making love and, and talking to and, and eating bread and spending time with and taking showers with someone who plans on mate switching on you, who plans on, uh, uh, on leaving you, who has already framed you as a person to leave and is abandoning you every chance he or she gets until you kick the person out. 
And so when you are looking at your relationship, thinking about re your relationship, grieving over your relationship, make sure that when you make the final decision to exit, that it is a final decision. Because when you kick somebody out and that person comes back and forth, uh, it messes with your confidence it messes with your heart. It messes with your mind. Uh, you can't think straight. Uh, you have struggles on your job because of the situation. And so uh, you always end up taking the person back because you feel bad. Because it's hard for you to get out of this, this mindset of, of what you had in mind for the relationship. You had something great in mind. You had a vision for the relationship, but that vision is not what it's been. It's been, it's, it's, that dream has really turned into a nightmare. And sometimes it takes that, it takes you having to accept the idea and let go of the idea of what you had in mind for the relationship. And that is not going to be what you thought it was going to be. So mate switching again, psychological strategy designed to detect and abandon costly mates in favor of switching to more beneficial mates. You don't always need to know why the person is switching on you because the more you want to know why, the easier it becomes for the person to keep pulling you into a relationship that is not a relationship. And it's easier to keep pulling at you uh, uh, to cheat with the person while he is married to someone else. And that's something you definitely want to do, don't want to do because you run the risk of, of uh, becoming the violent person in the relationship that is really not even a relationship. So this is Favors Single Life Tips. You can visit my website, ReginaWideFavors.com. Really take some time to look at all of the, the audio lessons on this particular viral post. Hopefully it will help you in making a decision about your own journey. Thank you very much for listening.